delicious spoon and today we're going to make a Mexican street corn salad. What I love about this salad is it's really easy to make, it takes no time at all and it's a really great way to use up some of the things in your fridge. So uh, before we get started I wanted to give a little history of what this is based on. It is based on a Mexican dish that you can find all over Mexico commonly found on the street and you can even find it at many festivals here the CNE I've seen it lots and lots of places um, and it's also a backyard favorite so traditionally it's called elote so elote is a Mexican street corn it's a corn on the cob that's been uh, grilled usually on a barbecue and browned a little bit to get some really great flavor in there and then it's topped with butter uh, cojita cheese cayenne pepper, spices, cilantro, you name it, it's sort of rolled in um, some uh, wonderful flavors and you can enjoy it however you like. I personally find that very difficult to eat. While it might be fun at a festival or great convenience for street food, I would rather have it in a bowl. So um, basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to roast up some corn. Now, if you have the time, certainly do it on the barbecue with uh, like a nice grilled corn on the cob um, to get that, you know, those that, uh, my husband loves his charcoal grill and makes the flavor just so much better. But in a pinch and then something you wanna do in the winter when you can't get out to barbecue, you can just do it in a pan and just roast it that way. Maybe not as good, but it works. So before, um, we dig on in, we actually have to make it, right? So <laughs> now actually I should also tell you a little bit more about what to use this for. So it is a salad, perfect for summer partying, having guests over, great for a dip. So if you have some nacho chips, you can use it as a salsa. You can use it on top of salads like a garnish and add some extra flavor to your salad over some romaine. Um, you can use it on tacos, in burritos. Um, over fish. It's just, it's endless what you can do with this recipe and that's why I think I love it so much. So let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna just turn this on to medium high. You can use any um, cooking oil you prefer. I am using avocado oil. Um, I actually got it on sale, look for it on sale. <laughs> um, so, cause it's a bit expensive avocado oil, but it's really, really, um, it's, it's, it's good for you. So uh, that's why I like to use it. Um, versus a vegetable oil, canola oil, they're a little bit more processed. This is a little bit less. Um, it's also avocado is known for being such a great fat. So I'm just gonna put in about two teaspoons. Um, I don't really measure when I do things at home. <laughs> so we're gonna let that heat up a bit. Then I've got um, about two to three uh, cloves of minced garlic. I had three small ones in this one or two large ones is what you're gonna use. So we're gonna let this oil heat up a little bit uh, to do that first and then we're just going to dump, dump this in. The other ingredients you're going to need is uh, corn. So this is what we're going to do right now is we're going to just pan roast it. We've got some uh, red pepper. Today I have jalapeno pepper but poblano pepper is what you want to use. Now poblano is sort of like a green pepper with a tiny bit more kick. It's a little bit longer and sometimes comes a little bit of a darker shade than a typical green bell pepper. You can use jalapeno peppers or a bell pepper. My husband likes things spicy and so do I, so I've gone with um, the jalapeno chopped. Or if you kind of want to mix it both and try and replicate a little bit of kick, but not as much as you would get with a jalapeno, maybe do a quarter cup of green pepper and a little bit of jalapeno. Got that, we've got some diced red onion, fresh cilantro. This is feta cheese. So feta cheese is a good substitute for cojita cheese. So cojita cheese um, is more difficult for me to find. There is a market downtown that I can get it at, but it's not that convenient and it's only open on weekends. Um, so I'm gonna just, for now, put this garlic into the pan. And we're just going to let it just uh, soften up a little bit, just release some of that flavor just for about a minute. We don't want the garlic to get brown at all because when garlic gets brown, it gets really bitter. So we don't want that. So now I'm gonna put in about two and a half cups of frozen corn kernels. If you have fresh, certainly use them. I don't this time of year. So we're just gonna mix that around. And I've used a larger pan just so that I can spread the corn out a little more evenly. Um, and by doing that, it's just going to allow it to brown a little faster. So I'm going to leave this for a few minutes and I'll be right back. So one thing to know here um, when making the corn is that it's going to start to soften up and it's going to release a little bit of water. Now, obviously things that are done on the, the uh, barbecue, if it was grilled on the barbecue, it'd be a lot drier and we wouldn't have this, this issue. So um, it's going to take a little bit longer. So um, I do have the 
stove, my hot plate for now. I have it on high because I want that water to quickly burn off and I want them to brown. So um, we don't want the corn to get soggy. So um, depends on how lucky I am today to get this to go. You can also rinse off the corn and then pat it dry because just like anything that you want to have brown, it needs to be the drier. It is the faster it'll brown. Um, but I am getting a little bit of a, a brownness here. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to spread it out, try and get as much flat surface as I can. And we're going to give it a few more minutes and see if we can get some brown kernels going here. Um, the rest of the ingredients that we're going to need, I have to go through with you. Um, so we started with the cohesive cheese. We've also got some black beans. I like to find spicy black beans because I like things spicy, but it's really hard again to find in Hamilton, Ontario. So uh, for now, I've just got regular black beans. You drain them well, make sure you get rid of all that starch, let them um, really uh, sit. So um, as far as the salad dressing goes, we're going to use some sour cream. We've got some fresh lime juice. You can throw some zest in there too. I'm using maple syrup to make them out of honey, but you can use honey or agave syrup to sweeten. Um, and then we have some paprika, cumin, and salt, all very traditional sort of spices. One of my favorite things to do, I, the reason why I've been to Mexico a million times, I am a travel agent too, I don't know if anybody knows that. Um, so if you want to talk to me about that, I can help you. Uh, but Mexico is one of my favorite beach uh, vacation spots to go to. I've probably went there on my honeymoon. I've been there, I'm gonna say I've been to 12 times. I've been up to Rio Nayarit, and, or um, uh, Riviera Nayarit, and, which is up near Puerto Vallarta. The Playa del Carmen or the Maya Riviera is my favorite. I've been over to Cozumel, and Playa del Mujeres is a new area that I haven't been to yet. I'm hoping to get there. But I just love the beaches. You know, there's a little bit of rockiness, and they, right now they've got the, the seagrass or the sargassum that's coming in. I don't know if that's how you say it, um, which is a bit of an issue, but the people there are amazing. I love the music, I love the food. I mean, I just can't say enough things. They've got some beautiful, the Provincial Park Jaha is absolutely stunning. They've got some beautiful cenotes and I'm a huge snorkeler. So um, that's pretty much the best snorkeling I think I've ever done. Um, here we got some browning happening. So I highly recommend it. If you ever want to chat Mexico, chat me up because I can talk your ear off. <laughs> My favorite place. There's a really good salsa bar on Fifth Avenue. Further down a little bit outside of the, the, but they have a live salsa band. And my husband isn't a dancer, but he is nice and he lets me dance with people who ask me. So sometimes somebody else's husband will see how desperate I am for a dance and take me out of the dance floor. And he's okay with it. He, he knows I used to be a competitive dancer, so he kind of knows it comes with the territory. So I'm gonna just turn this off now. I'm gonna push this out of the way in a minute. Um, I'm just going to dump this corn into the salad bowl or into a large bowl. It can be prettier than my plain bowl, but this plain bowl. You want a large bowl. I find anything small, too small, it's hard to mix. So now it's really simple. So now we're just gonna throw in black beans, the red pepper, the poblano pepper, in my case, jalapeno. I've got some red onion. Uh, the cilantro, this was for my garden. It's a little wetter than I'd like because I hadn't washed it. <laughs> so I'm just going to stir this on up. Okay. So we're going to set this aside for a minute. So I'm just going to use the dish I had for the corn. I'm going to make the salad dressing. Um, I'm going to put the cheese on it last just because the corn is warm. So I don't want to put the cheese on it and then it kind of get all melty and lose. It's kind of texture. So we're not going to do that. So I have, I'm going to get a spoon. I'm just going to use a simple fork because I find the fork is just kind of a small version of a whisk. <laughs> Again, I don't like a lot of tools. So this is some sour cream. So you put that in the bowl, some maple syrup to sweeten again, some lime juice, add a little zing. And then we've got the paprika, cumin, and the salt. Now, I'm not a huge creamy salad dressing fan. It's just not my jam. Uh, but I don't find with the lime juice and the spices, even though it's a creamy-based sauce, it's not thick and gloopy. I don't like gloopy salad dressings. So that's kind of it. Super easy. So now we're just going to dump this uh, dressing into... And 
now I'm gonna put the cojita cheese. This is again, like I said, feta for now. Similar texture, not authentic to be feta. It is cojita cheese, it's authentic to uh, elote, but it does in a pinch. And you have to work with what you have. Just because I don't have the exact ingredients doesn't mean I can't enjoy uh, a semi-traditional sort of version of this dish because <laughs> it really is delicious. So just gonna mix that up. So that's it. Now that we have this salad all whipped up, you can see how nice and colorful it is. I would really love to know what you're gonna be using it for. Will you be just eating it as a salad? Will you be putting it in, as a dip on tacos or as a dip with some chips? Um, you could even put it on like a crostini, maybe put some like a nice cheddar on top, melt it and get it all melty and dip it with salsa. I could just go on. So this salad is super, super versatile. And honestly, it's always a favorite when I make this for people. So I really can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. Please, again, like I said, share some pictures and comments be in, in, uh, below um, under this video or follow me on Instagram and share your comments and pictures there. You can find me on Instagram at The Delicious Spoon. You can find me on Facebook at The Delicious Spoon and on Twitter at The Delicious Spoon. <laughs> I have to change it up. So I will leave you with that. In the meantime, I happy eating. Enjoy your summer and I hope to see you guys again soon. Thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it.